Reddit. And this week we have a good question. Um, I believe it's a question we've discussed before, but again, they always bear further discussion. So do you want to read the question and the comment? All right, the question, why does the church not seem to take the sin of gluttony as seriously as others? He says, many churches I've gone to over the years had obese pastors and many of the congregation were also heavy, not saying they were all overweight because of medical conditions, just that that isn't the case for most. Why do they not take it as seriously as say lust or envy? Mm, That is a good question. And look, this is a tough topic because many of the people that you know may be potentially gluttonous, right? So it's a hard thing to talk about. Um, But it's something that if it's still a sin, right, then it should be talked about and it should still be avoided as we strive after righteousness. Um, Mm -hmm. So I think gluttony is still a sin. Uh, I, you know, it's listed right next to drunkenness in like Deuteronomy 21 verse 20. Uh, In other places, gluttony is listed as well. And I think more so, it's easily one of the most public sins that we commit. Well, I'm going to say you can be gluttonous and have a high metabolism and it doesn't show. So not everybody can hide that sin. Right. I mean, certainly like you can be gluttonous and it not show and you can be overweight and not be gluttonous. Right. So, yeah. Um, Overweight does not mean you're a glutton. No. Uh, I mean, again, people's metabolisms are different, but it's something we should be considering and talking about because most often, though, when you are overweight or to the point of like obesity, then you most likely are gluttonous. I wonder when it gets, I mean, I know, okay, the, I believe a lot of the vaccines cause medical conditions for people. Um, that make it very hard for them to lose weight. It messes up the GI tract. A lot of people understand that. Um, so that has nothing to do with being a glutton when you're battling some. I think we're dealing with things today that they were not dealing with back then. Um, you know, the pharmaceutical industry has wreaked havoc on people's bodies, um, creating sickness and disease. Um, also the FDA. Food isn't food anymore. People can just eat, you know, I guess pre-packaged food, you know, the inside, the aisles, not the outside where the fresh food and the meat is, but you eat anything in there. Like you get soup, like you're trying to be healthy and you're getting, you know, you can even get keto stuff, like health food and you gain weight because Right. We're so and deceived on what is healthy today, like all the plant-based everything that causes inflammation in our bodies. Well, and I don't believe um, in, again, not medical science, but I don't believe that zero calorie things are actually like treated as zero calorie in your body. I think that they, that's a big reason why a lot of overweight people stay overweight. I mean, they drink right. all the diet, are the, all the zero calorie fake sweeteners. And I don't, just my own opinion from observation I don't think it's zero calorie, uh, the way your body handles it. Yeah, it has nothing, nothing to do with so, it. I think our message. So I do think there's some truth to that, that yeah. not everyone who's overweight is gluttonous for sure. It's just the way that we eat, the foods that we're given are garbage. Everything's by and large. GMO. Yeah, it's really but even hard. still, it's something that should be considered. Cause like the guy mentioned in his post there, like I do think that it can hurt your testimony as a pastor. If you're, yeah. you know, I think we've got, or we've told you guys about the, the pastor from a previous church. I think we might've mentioned this before. It was a church we went to years ago. Good pastor, taught the word well and everything, mm-hmm. but he was like very overweight, like to the point of obesity. And I had a hard time in that church, like good teacher and all that taught the word well, but like every time he's on stage, right, there just seemed to be like a glaring sin staring the con- congregation in the face. And that's just hard to ignore, um, or at least it yeah. should be, right? Like if every time you went to church and your pastor had his mistress in the front row, you should be like, this is super weird. I feel like something's not, and again, gluttony, we don't talk about it a lot, but when you see it, it should strike you as like, 
maybe this dude has a problem with food or like he eats too much. And I don't um, even, we don't even know what correct portions really are. Like, do we really need 2000 calories a day, which is what we're taught, but that could be, you could eat like four muffins. And that's not being gluttonous. You're just eating some muffins, those prepackaged large muffins, you know what I'm talking about. Those are over 500 calories. And you just, I wasn't being gluttonous. I was just eating. I was hungry and I was eating bread. Yeah. You're not in your mind trying to be gluttonous. It's just the way our food is created today. It's on purpose. It's to make us sick. It's the FDA. It's the pharmaceutical companies together. Like I, this Oh, it's a conspiracy. Yeah, it's true. It's not a conspiracy theory. It is a real thing. So I, I'm not blaming people, people for, I don't even know really people who are gluttons. You can't say, oh, you stopped at McDonald's and you got a meal. You're a glutton. No, that's not, you're just eating right, a meal. Glutton is more just kind of, I would say excess in a lot, you know, really in any area, but it tends to be tied to food. And- well, one of my friends had told me her son Woke up like an older, I don't know, 18, 19 year old and ate like six hot dogs. Okay, you're being a glutton there. You woke up in the middle of the night to eat six hot dogs and a box of macaroni and cheese to yourself. That's that's a lot. Like <laughs> that I right. I'd say that is an example of being a glutton. And I'm um, not trying to say that like overweight people are gluttons and we should call out overweight people. I mean, please forgive me if that's what you think we're trying to say. Right. I mean, we care um, about I the health of people like you want nobody well, wants to be a slave to something that's going to destroy them no it's something that will destroy you it's a, i just it's think a the sin. larger point is that like I mean, i've been in church for 38 years i've never heard a sermon on gluttony in my life yeah and that's bizarre to me because we are a nation that's increasingly obese um and again like we you know Everyone knows churches love their potlucks and to eat all, but no one ever talks about like, hey, let's be restrained, right, in how we eat. And maybe just you know, cut back on were, the sweets. We're we are a nation addicted to sweets, right? though, because like, you could extend gluttony if you wanted to, where you're just taking an excess of. And again, you know, we kind of talk about it in some respects. You know, if you're being, we kind of call it more addicted, like you're addicted to video games instead of being like, yeah. and you're kind of like gluttonous in the excessive nature that you spend playing video You're games. excessive in but some But no one area. ever like ties it to like actual food, maybe because it hurts feelings, which I get. You don't want to hurt people's yeah. feelings, but it should be talked about. It's a Well, sin. it is an embarrassing thing. It is a thing you can't hide and people will judge and think you have an overeating problem when you really don't. It's really hard to it is, lose but weight. But again, this kind of goes back to the Greg Locke thing of you can't just talk to people about what they want to hear. You have to talk to them about what they need to hear. And, you know, if you're preaching through the word, you come across something like gluttony, you know, I would really hope that as a pastor, you would take the time to speak against that sin. And, you know, even if people don't like to hear about it, I think we need to hear what gluttony is. Like you said, it's not just food. Like it can be excess in other things. I guess it's just being obsessed with something, being addicted I mean, you can be a glutton with soda, like if drinking you're too much pop. That's gluttonous. Reverend That's not Peterson good for you. and your gluttonous for white church money. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe someone should speak against that sin. Uh, no, I do. I think it's interesting though because I've never heard a discussion on it in church. Never heard a sermon. But we know that. Have you looked up su- some? Did you link some? I didn't. Oh. <laughs> um, for our recommended listening, we're not. We're going completely opposite of everything we've talked about here because it was just such a good sermon. You guys need to listen to it. But uh, yeah, this is something we should talk about. We shouldn't be afraid to talk about it because if it's in God's word, then it's for God's people. Yeah, and yeah. this kind of is one of Vody Bauckham's red flags, right? If you have a pastor who's apologizing for the word of God or even like ducking certain things in the Bible, that's a red flag, right? So you should be confident to say what God says and not apologize for it. So, you know, gluttony is in there. We need to know what it means and how to avoid it because we should be avoiding it. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, whether that's food or it's, you know, maybe extends into other areas of your life where you're gluttonous, then you need to give up those as well, right? So I think it's an important thing. It's something churches should talk about. I don't know why Mm -hmm. they don't. I mean, I do know why they don't, but they should talk about it just like every other sin. I don't know if it's, I don't know. I guess you can't be ashamed of God's word, but. 
it will hurt people's feelings and it could start some problems in the church. I, I think it is one it of those could, things. But also you need if to be somebody's walking careful. in sin, we should care more about their sin and being set free from sin than if it's gonna ruffle their feathers and make them angry with me. And again, yeah. this has to be groundwork laid. I think this is why being an expositional preacher is so important, uh, you know, line by line, book by book. Because if you're a topical preacher and you show up one Sunday and go, I'm talking about gluttony, you know, all the overweight people in the church are going to go, how dare you? Mm -hmm. But if you're just preaching through Deuteronomy and you stumble on Deuteronomy 2120 and you're like, all right, let's see what the Lord has to say to us. Gluttony. (laughs) We're talking about it. Like now you can't really duck it. You're not singling people out, but you're speaking about a sin that people need to address. So um, that's my, uh, my advertisement for expositional preaching. Yeah, it's a lot to do with our our culture. I mean, just thinking about the things that cause people to not move around like they should either. I mean, just video games, computer games, we're so distracted. We have every excuse to just sit down and not get up and move. Well, there's a lot of things to contribute to being obese besides just gluttony. It's just not being active too. So yeah, for sure. And again, like how would you preach the sermon like that to if you had a congregation and nobody was overweight? How would you talk about it? Well, again, and that's why you know there's the you know biblical you know what is it the uh, exegeting the text to figure out what it means, but then there's also the, uh, the application of that word for your church today. So you know if you have a church full of you know X Games participants and they're all you know, 22 year old skaters that are thin as a rail in their baggy jeans or whatever it happens to be. I don't know what skaters wear anymore, but maybe your excess is something different that you're talking about, right? Maybe you drink way too many Red Bulls. It's not good for your heart. I think, you know, that... whatever it happens to be, but you would tailor it to the church. But I mean, let's be honest, most churches are filled with generally older people. And we know a lot of us in America like to eat. That's one of the blessings that we've been blessed with in this nation is abundance. Mm -hmm. And we just tend to take advantage of that abundance. Yeah. If we had real food, you know, a couple hundred years ago or whatever, and we were just eating real food, even if you were eating a lot of it, you wouldn't really see obese people still. Well, and we also did real work back then. I mean, work today is sitting on your butt for 10 hours a day. Um, so, you know, that's not good for us either. So you can not be gluttonous and just not get exercise Mm -hmm. and gain weight. But I mean, there's a lot of factors into it. The bigger point is like, we should talk about it because it's still be taught. Yeah, you're right. So, um, I hope we didn't say anything offensive. No, I mean, again, we're not trying to say, well, if you're overweight, you're a sinner. We're not trying to say that. (laughs) Right. Um, cause we don't know anybody's life situation. We're just saying this is a sin. We all need to avoid it and we should talk about it because it's the sin we all need to avoid. And that's what churches and pastors and elders exist for, is to lead us in spiritual maturity. So when these things come up, we need to talk about it, right? We can't just sweep one sin under the rug and be like, ooh, that's an uncomfortable one. So Mm -hmm. no, it's there, so talk about it. Um, And again, this is, depending if your gluttony leads you to obesity, that's a very public and prominent sin that again, I think can hurt your testimony, um, or at least, give question to your testimony. Like, are you really living sort of an exemplar, exemplary life? Are you really striving after holiness in all areas? Because it seems like there's one area you're not. Again, that's just speculating and maybe it's not we right know, to like, do that. We know like the temptation of that. food is actually stronger than a sexual temptation because it's a survival thing. And we're constantly yeah. hungry more than we're like, lustful, you know. And a lot of pastors will go out of their way to avoid the appearance of something like lust or sexual adult, you know, sexual immorality. So like they won't do one-on-one meetings in like closed rooms with opposite sex Mm -hmm. members because they don't want to even give off the appearance of sin. But then it's like, we don't consider that maybe in all areas where we maybe should. So that's all. Yeah.